Welcome to this lecture number 29 on this NPTEL course on fluid mechanics for undergraduate chemical engineering students. The topic we are currently discussing is dimensional analysis. Okay. We pointed out in the last lecture that dimensional analysis affects a reduction number of in the number of variables among few dimensional variables. Suppose, you have uh, a set of dimensional variables let us say q 1, q 2, q 3, so on up to q n there are n dimensional variables. Okay. Then the pi theorem guarantees that there is an functional relationship let us say capital G among n minus m non dimensional groups that are made out of these n dimensional variables, where m is the number of fundamental dimensions in the problem. Dimensions in the problem. Okay. So, these could be mass, length and time. Uh, in most cases, but if you have heat transfer you could have mass length time and temperature as well. So, example m l t and if you have heat transfer this is the dimension of temperature. Okay. So, the pi theorem essentially guarantees that you can reformulate uh, a relationship between n dimensional variables into a reduced set of uh, variables they are these variables are non dimensional groups sometimes called as pi groups. Now, we also outlined uh, the set of steps that one has to uh, follow in order to uh, affect this uh, uh, non dimensionalization into pi groups. So, steps okay. the first step is you first list all the dimensional variables in the problem, relevant dimensional variables in the problem. As I mentioned in the last lecture, admittedly this involves uh, some physical intuition, uh, some, phys some engineering judgment as well as some experience that helps in deciding what are the various relevant physical parameters that affect a given uh, uh, quantity. Okay. For example, in the case of drag force uh, on a sphere we mentioned in the last lecture that uh, one expects the drag force to be dependent on the velocity at which the sphere is moving, the diameter of the sphere, the viscosity of the liquid in which it is moving and the density of the liquid. Um, we have neglected other parameters such as uh, surface tension at the interface between liquid and solid uh, hoping that that is not a relevant variable for this problem. Now, if indeed the additional variables affect uh, the functional relationship that will show up when we actually do experimentation. Okay. So, the first step is to list all the dimensional variables in the problem. The second step is to select the fundamental dimensions. Okay. And this is usually in fluid mechanics problems mass length and time instead of mass one could use uh, force as a fundamental dimension, but uh, uh, one could uh, use mass length and time. And if you have heat transfer in your problem uh, if you have heat transfer and fluid flow then you have uh, the temperature theta as well. Okay. The third step is now you have to set select okay, and let us say there are m fundamental dimensions in the problem, m fundamental dimensions if it is m l and t it is just 3 m equals 3 in general you may have m fundamental dimensions. Now, you have to select m repeating variables. Okay 
okay, you have to select m repeating parameters or variables dimensional parameters out of the n dimensional variables null variables okay, such that you can construct all the m fundamental dimensions in terms of these variables. in terms of the repeating variables. I will illustrate this soon with an example. Okay. The fourth step is now to represent the fundamental dimensions in terms of repeating variables repeating variables and the fifth step is to finally do the non dimensionalization okay non dimensionalize the remaining Lies the remaining m minus n variables, m minus n dimensional variables using the result from step 4. Step 4. Okay. So, this is the essential procedure. Now, I am going to illustrate this for the special case of drag force on a sphere. On a sphere, okay, we already found out what are the relevant variables. The relevant variables are the force, velocity, diameter viscosity and density okay so there are n equals 5 variables okay and the second step is to find out what are the primary dimensions present among these five variables the fundamental the word i used is fundamental dimensions if you can list down all the dimensions of uh, these variables you will find that the fundamental dimensions are mass length and time okay which i will do now what are the dimensions of various variables well force the dimensions of force is mass times acceleration okay the dimensions of velocity is length by distance the dimensions of the diameter of the sphere is simply length the dimensions of viscosity as we have seen is m times inverse length times inverse times inverse time di the dimensions of and finally the dimensions of density is mass per volume it's m l to the minus 3 okay so if you can see all the variables you will see that you have m you have l and you have time okay there's no other fundamental dimension present in this problem the fourth step is to select repeating variable repeating variables or repeating parameters such that you can construct all the three fundamental dimensions based on these three repeating parameters now there is a, a element of judgment involved here for example i'm going to first make a choice and show that it doesn't work okay and then i'll do the uh, right choice all i'm trying to say is that you cannot choose any three variables okay so first let me flag off by saying wrong choice 
and then I will show why it is wrong. So, so let us say we are going to choose uh, the three repeating variable variables as f mu rho. Okay. If are chosen if f mu and rho are chosen as repeating variables okay. then all we want to do is now represent mass length and time in terms of these three variables. Now, let us see whether we can represent mass in terms of these three variables. So, mass times length to the power 0 times time to the power 0 must be represented as the dimension of force which is m l t to the minus 2 to the power a times okay, mu to the power b which is the dimension of mu is m l to the minus 1 t to the minus 1 to the power b times rho power c. If I can find a combination of a, b and c such that this is satisfied that means that we are we have found a way to non dimensionalize mass with a combination of f mu and rho. Now, how are we going to proceed further? We are going to equate in the first let me write down expand these uh, powers out. I can write this as m to the power a plus b plus c l to the power a minus b minus 3 c t to the power minus 2 a minus b. Okay. If these two equations are equal dimensionally equal same then the exponents must match. Okay. So, we will get the following equations for the exponents. Okay, we will find we will get three equations for the three unknowns. If we find a solution a non trivial solution to this set of three equations that means, we will be able to write mass in terms of the three repeating parameters f mu and rho. Okay. Now, let us try to solve this the third equation tells you that b equals minus 2 a. Okay. Let us call this 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now, 1 plus 2 implies 2 a okay, minus 2 c is 0 or a equals c. So, equation 1 then implies a plus b, b is minus 2 a okay, and a equals c plus c, c is a is equal to um, 0. Let me just see this. I am sorry, this is there is an error here a plus b plus c is 1 because the exponent of m is 1. So, this is 1. So, a plus b plus c should be 1. So, this should be 1, but this is 0. So, this is inconsistent. The equations are inconsistent that means, no solution exists okay, which implies that the f mu rho is a wrong choice for repeating variables. So, it is a wrong choice for repeating variables. Therefore, we have to choose some other set of uh, variables. So, let us now let me write down correct choice one of the correct choices could have others also. So, all I am trying to get at by doing this wrong example is that you cannot choose any three parameters and say I will construct all the fundamental dimensions out of them because as I have just shown it is not always possible. So, you have to choose those three variables from which you can construct all the three fundamental dimensions. Okay. So, now let us now try to select the repeating variables as I 
as rho v and d. Okay. Now, let us see whether we can get a mass out of rho v and d m to the 1 l to the 0 t to the 0 is m l to the minus 3 times a l t to the minus 1 times b times l to the power c. Okay. So, you have this is equal to m to the power a uh, times l to the power minus 3 a uh, minus or plus b plus c times t to the power minus b. Okay. So, by comparing you will find that a is 1, b is 0, minus 3 a plus b plus c is 0, but since b is 0 you have 3 a equals c or c is 3 times 1 is equal to 3. Okay. So, what we find is that the mass dimension can be obtained by okay, by writing rho to the power a times v to the power b times d to the power c, which is rho to the power 1 v to the power 0 and d cube. So, this means that you can write get a dimension of mass by multiplying rho by d cube that makes physical sense, because rho is mass per unit volume and you are multiplying by d cube which has dimensions of volume. So, you will obviously, get a mass dimension. Likewise, you can get the other two dimensions in the following way. Okay. Uh, so, this is mass dimension. So, let the length dimension is trivial, because you can choose d as the length dimension and time dimension we can just choose d by v. Okay. So, d by v is a time scale. So, with these three now we can non dimensionalize the remaining three variables. So, remember we had a total of six variables f v d mu rho okay. and we have already chosen v d and rho as repeating variables. So, they are already chosen as repeating variables. So, we had a total of n is 5 variables and you had 3 fundamental dimensions. So, the pi theorem says that there must be 2 non dimensional groups n minus m is 2 there must be 2 non dimensional groups ok. So, the 2 non dimensional groups must be obtained by non dimensionalizing f and rho ok. So, the dimensions of f are m l t to the minus 2. Okay. So, mass is rho d cube okay. in our, uh, uh, in our uh, repeating variables you can get the dimension of mass by rho obtain multiplying rho by d cube. Dimensions of length is d dimensions of time is essentially d by v. So, we have time inverse uh, squared. So, we have v squared by d squared. So, force can be non dimensionalized by the dimensions of force will be the same as rho d to the 4 v squared by d squared or the dimensions of the force will be the same as the dimensions of rho d squared v squared. Okay. So, you can non dimensionalize force by rho v squared d squared is a non dimensional group. Is one one of the non we have we have to find two non dimensional groups out of the five physical variables. This is one non dimensional group. What is the other non dimensional group? We have to non dimensionalize. So, we have non dimensionalized uh, the force now. So, we have to still non dimensionalize viscosity. Okay. So, how are you going to do that? 
you write the dimensions of viscosity okay dimension of viscosity is m l to the minus 1 t to the minus 1. So, the dimension of viscosity will be the same as rho d cube that is mass length is 1 over d t is v over d. So, t inverse is d over v. Okay. So, the dimension of viscosity will be the same as okay. now I cancel this d and this d. So, okay, it is rho d cubed I am sorry this m l to the minus 1 t to the minus 1 uh, t to the minus 1 is actually v over d. So, let me do this again t to the minus 1 is v over d. So, you will have 2 d's cancelling d cube to give d squared here to get okay, finally, to get rho d v. So, the dimensions of u sorry mu the viscosity is identical to the dimensions of rho d v. So, if I divide mu by rho d v is a second non dimensional group. group. So, we have finally, come up with we had initially a dimensional relationship between 5 dimensional variables. Okay, we have now reduced it to a function relationship between 2 non dimensional groups mu by rho v d. Now, one important thing is that it does not matter whether. So, let us call this as pi 1. Okay. We can always write uh, instead of writing mu by rho v d, we can also write 1 over pi 2 is rho v d by mu. You will get some other function relationship between these two uh, so let us say g prime of f by rho v squared d squared and essentially you have two non dimensional groups and you cannot construct one out of the other they are two independent non dimensional groups from the original set of five parameters now in fluid mechanics this is called the drag coefficient this non dimensional force drag force is called the drag coefficient and this non dimensional groups rho v d divided by mu is called the reynolds number Okay. Now, what is the interpretation of Reynolds number? We will come to that shortly, but essentially what we have tried to show is that by doing this non dimensionalization, okay, um, we get a fun, we get two non dimensional groups and instead of writing the fun, function relationship among five dimensional variables, we can now write it as a functional relationship among only two non dimensional groups and I have already pointed out the advantage of using uh, dimensionless groups in representing physical data experimental data, because that immediately allows for scaling up or scaling down uh, as long as you are matching the non dimensional groups from the uh, model as well as the prototype. Okay. This we have pointed out extensively, extensively in the previous lecture. Okay. Now, I am going to make an additional comment. Okay. Suppose, we do experiments. So, essentially we find that f by rho v square d square is a function of rho v d by mu. This is what our dimensional analysis is telling you. Suppose, you do experiments, do experiments, experiments tell us okay, that the following result that is let us call this pi 1 and let us call this group pi 2. So, we expect pi 1 is some function of pi 2. Suppose the experiments tell you that the relationship between these two groups is such that pi 1 is some constant by sorry this is pi 2. 
sorry pi 1 is function of pi 2. So, that is okay. some constant divided by pi 2. Suppose experimental data tells us this after doing experiments you find that pi 1 is some constant by pi 2. Now, what this means is that pi 1 times pi 2 is a constant. So, this is pi 1 times pi 2 is another non dimensional group that is actually we can call this pi 3 let us say is a constant. What is this pi 3? We can write the two non dimensional groups f by rho v square d square times rho v d by mu is a constant. Okay. Now, I am going to cancel the two densities okay. and what you will find is that f divided by and we will can cancel one uh, length dim dimension we will cancel one velocity to give f divided by v d by mu okay. Okay, is some constant. Okay. So, what this means is that rho which was thought to be a physically relevant variable originally okay, okay, which was thought to be a physically relevant variable originally it is dropping out of the function relationship as given by experiments. So, the experiments are telling us that rho is not a relevant variable this implies experiments imply rho not a relevant variable. I am sorry this is yeah that is ok rho v d by mu okay, yeah, that is ok it is not a relevant variable. Okay. So, this is an important relation that one gets that just by uh, finding out. So, sorry mu should come here that is that was a mistake I was making mu should just come here. So, f divided by v d mu is a constant that means, rho is dropping out of our entire picture. So, rho is not a relevant variable. So, this teaches this tells us a very very important lesson that based on our own intuition we may choose a set of variables and proceed with dimensional analysis and in this simplest case for drag force on a sphere we found uh, that uh, we have two dimensionless groups the drag force which is f divided by rho v square d square and then you have the Reynolds number which is rho v d by divided by mu. Now, if the experiments are telling us that the drag force is proportional to 1 over Reynolds number that is what we are essentially saying that pi 1 is some constant divided by pi 2 then by rearranging pi 1 and pi 2 that is we can re, re express that relation as pi 1 times pi 2 is equal to a constant that means that that pi 1 times pi 2 is redefined as a new non dimensional group pi 3 and that pi 3 has no density in it. So, this in, in, in essence this implies that density is not a relevant variable at least as per the experiments done in a particular regime. Okay. So, if rho is not a relevant variable you had only if rho not relevant you have only four variables f v d mu. So, n is 4 you have three fundamental dimensions you have therefore, n minus m is only one non dimensional group as per pi theorem. Okay. Which means that you have this and that non dimensional group is just f by v d times mu. Okay. So, when rho is not a relevant variable then there is only non one non dimensional group if there is only one non dimensional group that there is no functional relation that non dimensional group must be a mere number and that is this constant c 1. Okay. The constant c 1 is a mere number. Okay. So, this new non dimensional group must be a constant if rho is not a relevant variable. Now, we will come a little bit later, but physically this happens when the viscous effects are dominant compared to the fluid inertial effects then rho then ceases to be a physically relevant variable. We will point this out a little later when we talk about drag forces on particles and so on. Okay. But right now all I am trying to say is that 
when we you when we use our physical intuition and judgment to come up with a set of variables physically relevant variables but if one of them is indeed not a relevant variable then that will actually show up in experiments okay that is the point i'm trying to drive across at this uh, uh, at this stage of course we'll come to um, drag forces a little later also okay now the next topic i'm going to do is to uh, motivate dimensional analysis not from the point of view of uh, experimentation, but I want to enquire into the physical meaning of the non dimensional group such as the Reynolds number. Right now the Reynolds number emerged purely from dimensionally non dimensionalizing a set of an, a problem uh, a set of variables such as force velocity and so on. If we non dimensionalize viscosity we obtain the Reynolds number. Is there a fundamental physical significance for the Reynolds number? The answer is yes and the answer comes by non dimensionalizing the navier stokes equation okay so we want to now non dimensionalize the navier stokes equations okay the navier stokes equations are simply written as rho times the substantial derivative of velocity is minus the gradient of pressure plus rho g plus mu del square d. Okay. Now all these uh, parameters have dimensions. Okay. Now to be concrete to give you a physical idea let us say we are worried about flow past a sphere the problem for which we just carried out dimensional analysis you have you could either consider a sphere moving at a constant velocity in a stationary fluid otherwise stationary fluid or you could consider the sphere to be stationary and you could uh, have the fluid uh, flowing past a sphere far away the, fl uh, the fluid could have uniform velocity both are equivalent uh, formulations because you could always change the reference frame from a stationary reference frame to a constant uh, constant uh, uh, to a reference frame that moves with a constant velocity okay so we're going to what we are going to do is with this problem in mind we are going to non dimensionalize the navier stokes equation so what are the physical variables you have the velocity v at which the fluid is flowing far away you have the diameter of the sphere okay you have the viscosity of the liquid density of the liquid okay now these are the parameters that we have and we want to use these parameters to non dimensionalize the navier stokes equation now first lengths um, all lengths that occur in the navier stokes equations there is a natural length scale they must be non dimensionalized by the diameter of the sphere okay all velocities can be non dimensionalized by v and times by d by v okay so we are going to define x star is the non dimensional x variable the x coordinate similarly y star is y divided by d z star is z divided by d okay now we also have gradients in the navier stokes equation now the non dimensional gradients gradients have dimensions of 1 over length so they are obtained by multiplying the dimensional gradient by the uh, length scale d now times that occur in the navier stokes equation you divided by the non dimensional time okay uh, and pressure okay already from bernoulli equation we know that p by rho and v squared have the same dimensions so we'll use this inertial scale for the pressure remember that the Bernoulli equation is valid in the strict limit when the fluid has no viscosity in viscid limit uh, the frictionless limit and in in the Bernoulli equation the only forces that are happening are the pressure forces the inertial forces due to kinetic energy of motion and uh, the gravity force. So we can choose the inertial scale rho v squared to non dimensionalize pressure. Okay. So when we do all this we have the continuity equation del dot v is 0 now we get d 
times v times del star dot v star is 0. Okay. This implies that sorry v divided by d this implies that continuity equation simply becomes del star dot v star is 0. This is the dimensional continuity equation. this is the non dimensional continuity equation and as you have as you would have realized by now all the non dimensional variables are denoted by an asterisk or a star okay this is the non dimensional mass conservation equation differential mass conservation equation likewise we can non dimensionalize the momentum equation you have rho d v d t this is the dimensional equation is minus del p plus mu del squared v plus rho g. Okay. Now, instead of velocity I am going to write as d v star and instead of time I am going to write t star. Okay. T is nothing but t stars times d by v. Okay. So, is minus rho v squared by d del star p star plus mu v by d squared del star squared of v star plus rho g. We will keep rho g as such right now. Okay. Um, only thing I will write is I will write g as the acceleration due to gravity vector times a unit vector which is dimensionless. So, it is rho g times g cap, g cap is a dimensionless unit vector. So, we are going to now multiply the entire equation by d squared by mu v. Okay. So, I am going to multiply this entire equation by d uh, or we can multiply the entire equation alternatively by d by rho v squared that will be much simpler for us. Okay. If you do that now the left side will be d v star by d t star. is equal to minus del star p star plus you get d by rho v squared times mu v by d squared times del star squared v star plus rho g times mu v by d squared sorry rho g times or d by rho v squared times rho g uh, times the dimensionless gravity vector unit vector that points in the direction of gravity. If you consider this combination okay, this is essentially mu by rho v d which was 1 over Reynolds number because Reynolds number if you remember we just defined Reynolds number as rho v d divided by mu okay. that is one uh, non dimensional group. Now the other non dimensional group okay, comes from this part Okay. This is nothing but d by d g divided by v square okay. that is the uh, other group that comes about, but traditionally a fruit number is defined as is defined as 
f r is v by square root of g d. So, what you have is 1 over f r square, 1 over fruit number square. Okay. So, if you look at this equation, all these terms are non dimensional, this is non dimensional, this is non dimensional, this is non dimensional, this is non dimensional, and these two groups that multiply the viscous term and the gravity term, they are also non dimensional. One is Reynolds number, other is related to the fruit number. So, we can write the non dimensional relation, non dimensional Navier Stokes equation as. T T star okay, is equal to minus del star P star plus 1 over fruit squared times the, okay, let us first write the viscous term 1 over Reynolds number times del star squared V star plus 1 over fruit number squared times the acceleration due to gravity vector. Okay. Now, if gravity is not important, that is if f r is large compared to 1, that means that gravitational force is not important, not important, because f r is very large compared to 1. So, 1 over f r squared will be very small compared to 1. So, in the limit of large fruit number, what we are the fruit number, if you see this, can be written as is V, you can multiply and divide by uh, fruit number is essentially a ratio of inertia to gravity. How do you find that? You can simply multiply both the numerator and denominator by. Uh, so, let us consider fruit squared, fruit squared is v squared by g d. This is nothing but if you multiply and divide by rho, you have rho v squared by rho g d. Okay. This is a measure of inertial forces and this is the measure of gravitational head. So, the fruit number is a ratio of inertial forces to gravity forces. So, when the fruit number is large compared to 1, then the inertial forces are much large compared to the gravitational forces in a problem. While if the fruit number is small compared to 1, it is the other way around, the gravita gravitational forces become very important. So, if you consider fruit number large compared to 1, then one can neglect this term. Okay. So, the Navier Stokes equation will then become simply for fruit large compared to 1 is minus del star p star plus 1 over Reynolds times del star squared v star. So, if we were to solve this, if you solve this, then the non dimensional velocity field will be a function only of the non dimensional position, okay, the non dimensional time and the Reynolds number. There is no other parameter in this equation, because everything is non dimensionalized. So, there is no geometric parameter like uh, the length of the pipe or anything or length uh, diameter of the sphere or anything, because you have already non dimensionalized. So, the non dimensional velocity can be a function only of these three non dimensional variables, out of which these are this is a physical coordinate along the uh, various points in space, this is time, okay. this is non dimensional time. So, the only physical variable that is under our control is actually the Reynolds number. Okay. This is the only physical parameter that is under control, this is a geometric parameter it is in the sense of how far you are from the sphere and this is a non dimensional time. Suppose you have steady flow past a sphere, steady flow, then the velocity at any point in the fluid will not be a function of time, it will be a function of only various spatial coordinates and the Reynolds number. Okay. Now, 
if you were to find the drag force from this okay force is equal to the integral of the shear stress viscous shear stress okay the non dimensional force will be integral of the viscous shear stress over the surface of the sphere roughly speaking now this is evaluated at the surface of the sphere okay that means that you are integrating over various positions. So, the non dimensional drag force will be a function only of Reynolds number. This is exactly what we found even in pure dimensional analysis without uh, worrying about Navier Stokes equations, but the Navier Stokes equations also tell the same thing. Okay. Now, another important lesson from this uh, result is that at a given Reynolds number, the velocity is a function only of for a given of the non dimensional position x star. So, what this means is that suppose I have two systems you have a tiny sphere and then you have a big sphere okay, and you have uniform flow past it far away with some velocity v 1 here it is v 2. Now, if you were to ask what is the velocity in the fluid okay, at a distance x 1 okay, and here at a distance let us say r 1 from the center of the sphere and at a distance r 2 from the center of the sphere. Okay. Now, if the Reynolds number is same for these two problems, if R e for system 1, this is system 1, this is system 2 is the same as R e for system 2. Then the non dimensional velocity for system 1 will be identically equal to the non dimensional velocity for system 2 okay, at same non dimensional distance r star okay, at same r 1 star is r 2 star. r 1 star is nothing but r 1 star is nothing but r 1 divided by d 1 the diameter of the tiny sphere r 2 star is nothing but r 2 divided by the diameter of the bigger sphere. If you ensure that r 1 star is r 2 star then the non dimensional velocity at a given non dimensional position is the same if the Reynolds number is the same. So, if you were to do experiments or numerical simulations not just to find uh, integrated quantities like drag forces, but even point wise variations. This non dimensionalization of the Navier Stokes equation is telling us that it is not necessary to solve these two problems individually separately. Okay. If you want the if you want the information at the same Reynolds number, okay, then the velocities of these non dimensional velocities of these two different systems will be identically equal if you are looking at the same non dimensional position, okay, which is r divided by d. So, this is a very very powerful. Um, result because this means that you do not have to do computations or experiments for these two problems separately. Once you non dimensionalize them once you solve one problem you have solved a whole infinitely uh, large number of geometrically similar problems okay. and that is a very 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 important simplification. Now, let us also come to the interpretation of Reynolds number which I promised few minutes back. Okay. Reynolds number is written as rho v d divided by mu which can be written as rho v squared divided by mu v divided by d. This is the ratio of inertial forces in the fluid remember that rho v squared is a measure of fluid inertia it also comes in the Bernoulli equation to the viscous forces in the fluid. Remember that the Newton's law of viscosity tells you that tau x y is mu times partial v x by partial y in the simplest case. If you if you estimate this as v divided by d, then mu v divided by d is a typical estimate of viscous stress present in the fluid. So inertial forces or inertial stress to viscous stress. Okay, so roughly speaking, Reynolds number is ratio of inertia to viscous uh, forces in the fluid, and it's a pure number. If the Reynolds number is very large compared to one, then one can anticipate that uh, inertial forces will dominate the flow 
and if Reynolds number is very small compared to 1, then one can guess uh, that the inertial forces will be small compared to the viscous forces. Okay. So, this is another uh, important thing that comes across uh, in uh, non dimensionalization. Now, finally, we will discuss similitude and scale up. I pointed this out uh, earlier itself, but let me also discuss this again okay, uh, in the context of an example. Okay. Suppose I have the motion of a sphere with diameter d okay, and d 1. Okay. So, let us call the diameter of the sphere a small d 1 and the diameter it is let us say it is moving in a pipe of diameter capital D 1 and you have another system a tiny sphere of diameter small d 2 moving in a pipe of diameter capital D 2. Okay. Let us say that the, the sphere is the center of the sphere and the center of the axis of the pipe are identical in both cases. Okay. Now, when, when are these two uh, systems dimensionally similar? When are these two systems similar? Geomet First requirement is geometric similarity. That is, you must have by geometric similarity, we mean that you should have a cylinder, I mean a pipe here and a sphere here, you, you should have a pipe here and a sphere here, not just that, but the ratio of d 1 to d 1 should be the same as the ratio of d 2 to d 2. Okay. So, unless this happens, these two systems are not geometrically similar. Moreover, we have assumed that the center of the sphere and the center of the axis of the pipe are coinciding in both the cases. If it is, if let us say in one of the cases it is eccentrically placed, again geometric similarity is violated. So, we can say that these two these two systems are geometrically similar only when all the length scales in the problem have the same ratios. Okay. So, uh, we should have first of all the, uh, the distance of the uh, center of the pipe okay, and the distance uh, the, the center of the pipe and the center of the sphere uh, to coincide on the same axis and we should also have uh, the ratios of these two length scales okay, to be the same. Otherwise, geometric similarity is not possible. Okay. Now, that is one important similarity. The second requirement okay, is kinematic similarity. So, if this is not the case, then uh, you will not have geometric similarity. Okay. Another illustration of geometric similarity, suppose you have an ellipsoid. Okay. Suppose the major and minor axis are by the ratio of 4 is to 1, you have another ellipsoid, you have 3 is to 1, okay. then these two are not geometrically similar. So, all the length scale ratios must be the same between two systems when some things are geometrically similar. Okay. And there are two more similarities, namely kinematic similarity and dynamical similarity. I will come to that in the next lecture, and these are very powerful ideas that help us in scaling up and scaling down uh, various experimental data from uh, laboratory to a real uh, real industrial device we'll stop here at this point and we'll continue in the next lecture